Welcome to Friendly Banjo Atheist. My name is Steve Boffman. For nearly 40 years, evangelist Ravi Zacharias has been deceiving the world about his academic credentials. If that sounds like a bold claim, it is, and it's one I could get sued for making, except that the evidence is solid. And I'd like to share that evidence with you, as well as the federal lawsuit Mr. Zacharias filed three months ago against a married Canadian woman from whom he admits receiving nude photos, and in which he does not deny the explosive allegation that he threatened suicide in writing in order to cover up his online affair with this person. Everyone has the right to not have their reputation unfairly tarnished. So before I made any of these allegations public, I presented them to Ravi Zacharias and his ministry and asked them to correct me if I had my facts wrong. They never did. I suspect that's because they can't. The lawsuit allegations come straight from Ravi's own court filings, and the evidence of credential fraud is straight from Cambridge and Oxford and from Ravi's own Christian colleagues each of whom is still alive and readily available for comment. Credentialed media may contact me and I will share every single one of my sources with you. Here's what we know. Ravi has told millions of people that he was a visiting scholar at Cambridge University. The problem is that Cambridge says he never was. Ravi quickly removed the claim from his official bio in the summer of 2015 after I told him that I had discovered it was false. Ravi claims to have been an official lecturer at Oxford, teaching there once a year. He also makes this impressive claim. You know, I lecture at Oxford University three times a year. I'm a senior research fellow there. Although I live in Atlanta, I go to Oxford and lecture there regularly. Richard Dawkins lectures out of there. The problem is that Oxford says they have no record of Ravi in their database and they don't think he's ever been one of their employees. It turns out that Ravi once held an honorary position at an affiliated institution of the university, a religious training school called Wycliffe Hall. But even Wycliffe Hall says that although Ravi has lectured there in the past, he has never held any formal teaching position there. And we know Ravi knew he was lying about Oxford because when I told him I was investigating his credentials, he removed all Oxford references from his official bio even before I told him I had discovered that they were false. Ravi tells us that in the 1980s he was a department chair at a place called Alliance Theological Seminary, a fairly prestigious academic position. The problem is he never was. In the 1980s, Alliance was so tiny it had no departments. Since the early 1980s, Ravi has held himself out as a doctor. He claims to hold several doctorate degrees, and his publishers have played right along, referring to him as Dr. Zacharias, or simply Ravi Zacharias, Ph.D. The problem is that Ravi has never so much as enrolled in an academic graduate program, much less earned a doctorate degree. He holds a bachelor's and a professional master of divinity and numerous honorary doctorates, but has refused until recently to disclose at his official bio that these doctorates were merely honorary. And although Ravi describes himself as a recognized authority in several academic fields, there appear to be no scholarly publications by Ravi Zacharias in any field whatsoever. The thing that makes poor Ravi fret is he didn't foresee the internet. Now the big man of God's in a little lurch, cause he can prove he lied with a Google search. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Ravi also tells us that as a young man, he won an annual international preaching competition attended by folks from all across Asia, and he was given the title, quote, Asian Youth Preacher Award, unquote. The problem is that when you Google the award, it does not seem to exist. Please give it a shot. So I tracked down all three of the men Ravi says were judges at that competition, and I learned that this was no international competition at all. All three judges confirmed that the competition was for India only, which explains why this impressive award exists only in Ravi Zacharias's self-promotional materials. Ravi makes the even more impressive claim that in 1990 he studied quantum physics at Cambridge University under the famous physicist John Polkinghorne. The problem is that it looks like he didn't. Dr. Polkinghorne had actually left the Cambridge Science faculty 11 years earlier to become a priest, and by 1990 he wasn't teaching physics. In fact, that year he taught one class on the Science Theology Dialogue and another one on Buddhism. Now let's move from Ravi's public deceptions to his recent online, to his credit, non-physical sex scandal. On July 31st, 2017, Ravi filed a federal lawsuit against a married Canadian woman named Lori Ann Thompson. Now as a lawyer, when I evaluate this case, I think that Ravi has been blackmailed. But you don't get blackmailed unless you've done something bad, and by his own admission, Ravi has. 
It's not just that he admits inappropriate conduct, as we have seen in paragraph 75, nor that he didn't report the relationship or the nude photos to his board right away, that he waited until after Ms. Thompson threatened legal action and after she accused him of using her to gratify his own sexual desires. And it's not just that he didn't even try very hard to terminate contact with Lorianne after the sexy photos started coming in. That's all kind of unflattering, but the really explosive stuff is found in a highly confidential legal letter to Ravi, where Lorianne's lawyer states that when she wished to confess the relationship to her husband, Ravi sent her an email threatening suicide. Attorney Mark Bryant told Ravi that he has a copy of that suicide email in his file, and we have to wonder, why would he bluff Ravi about something Ravi did not do? And although Ravi denies many things in his court filing, he did not deny making that written suicide threat. This is explosive stuff that the Christian media has avoided like a potato straight out of hell. Incidentally, Ravi settled his lawsuit last week on November 9th, 2017, so we may never know what exactly happened between Ravi and Lori Ann. I urge you, especially if you are a Christian who has donated money to Ravi, to contact him and ask him how much he paid Lori Ann for her silence. And did that money come from your donations? After all, did you really want your hard-earned money converted into 30 pieces of silver? And while you're at it, please ask Mr. Zacharias to publicly comment on what sure seems to be compelling evidence of systematic credential fraud. He can ignore you, of course, but at some point we're entitled to conclude that this charming gentleman has a lot of stuff in his closet that he does not want us to know about. Where do Ravi's colleagues in ministry stand on all this? The Apostle Paul warns followers of Christ not to so much as have lunch with unrepentant fellow Christians, but over at Ravi's self-named ministries, these people reap the benefits of being in business with a morally challenged but very successful evangelist. They get the stage, the limelight, the prestige of being part of a vibrant international organization. Will these self-proclaimed followers of Jesus heed their Lord's command to speak truth to power, or will they continue to lick the hand that feeds them? Word is out that Ravi Zacharias' life's work has been based on false pretenses, and unless the blood of Christ can really tame entrenched ego and insecurity, his greatest legacy will be as yet another Christian leader who deep down did not believe his own religion. A Friendly Banjo Atheist Production.